Linden. Folks, it's a great pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and, as others have done, I declare my own uh, trade union membership. I'm a member of Unite. Um, I did find it rather uh, mildly ironic that, in the course of a debate about minimum service levels, there was at least one Conservative MP who disappeared for the majority of it, only to come back, presumably to vote. Uh, I <laughs> wouldn't uh, go as far as identifying who that individual was. Um, the one question that I would pose before I go any further uh, to uh, the shadow front bench would be to get a commitment from any incoming Labour government that the legislation that we're discussing today would be repealed within the first 100 days mm -hmm. of a Labour government, mm -hmm. um, because I, I am not the only one who's been slightly alarmed at the, the deviation where the current Labour leadership has gone in terms of its commitment to, to workers' rights. Um, and I think it's only important to, to put that on the record. The whole reason, Ms Noakes, that we have found ourselves in a situation where we are uh, scrutinising this uh, delegated legislation is because earlier in the year legislation was brought forward uh, by the government. We all know why that legislation was brought forward by the government. It was essentially to have a pop at the likes of Mick Lynch and various others. Um, and we know what happens when government tries to bring forward legislation on the hoof as a result of press coverage. It tends to be legislation that is uh, rushed through, that is in the form of a dog's dinner. We then come forward with delegated legislation to try and tidy it up. Uh, and I would rather suspect, Ms Noakes, that it is probably uh, not going to be a surprise that at some point further legislation will come down the track, because as other members who have taken part in today's debate have outlined, uh, there are already holes, uh, and that is within only the space of uh, 75 minutes or so of scrutiny of, of the regulations. Um, the first thing that I am concerned about is that the commencement of the regulations uh, will come straight after they have passed both houses. Uh, and the Code of Practice on Reasonable Steps uh, obviously uh, has to come into effect. Uh, that would, of course, be mid-December, uh, only a matter of weeks away. And the very idea that Parliament, which we were told during the Brexit process was somehow taking back control, uh, is having this kind of thing foisted upon it in a delegated legislation committee, uh, does raise a number of questions. But the regulations impose an effective strike ban, and I, I want to just briefly make reference, uh, because I, I don't want to detain the committee for too long, obviously. Um, but the, the regulations, and I want to draw the attention to Annex A, which is absolutely wild. I don't know how many members of the committee have actually looked at the government's draft code. Um, but the idea that a, a trade union official would be compelled to send a letter to its members suggesting that they are required to work, required to continue throughout the, um, the, the process of the letter, uh, name of union, that's, that's the insert the name of the union, it advises you not to strike, you should ignore any call to strike, uh, we encourage you to notify the picket uh, that you're inquired by the work notice uh, to work at that time. The idea that the trade union official, probably the person who would be the picket supervisor, would be asked to show a copy or a variation of this letter. Mm -hmm. uh, it really does uh, beg a belief. And it, it strikes me that whoever it is that's drafted it in Whitehall has absolutely no understanding uh, of, of trade union organisation whatsoever. Uh, although uh, that might not come as a surprise me. I'm happy to debate more. Well, well, yeah. You can sound that this sort of increasing authoritarian approach of this government. I mean, people are now required to turn up with photo ID. Uh, to uh, polling stations. Now they've got to have a, a, a slip to allow them to cross a picket line. I mean, is, is this the kind of libertarian approach that people had originally expected from the Conservative Party? Ah, well, my honourable friend makes a good point. Um, it, it wasn't that long ago that we had a Home Secretary that basically called for an insurrection in Whitehall only a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but the reality is that this is a government who has got a questionable record when it comes to its libertarian values. My honourable friend is right. Whether it's the uh, restrictions, uh, the, the frankly voter suppression mechanisms that are brought forward by the government, or indeed the public order bill, um, which seeks to curtail people's basic right uh, to assemble and to demonstrate. And of course, we know that this legislation, many of the regulations in it, uh, have been criticised by the ILO uh, for, for the fact that it goes against the, the, the basic, the most fundamental human right uh, for a, an employee to, to withdraw uh, their labour. Now, I want to um, just come on to one or two other aspects of things, um, and I think most of it has, has actually been covered, um, but I, I do have uh, particular concerns about the identification of members. Um, the Strikes Act obviously mandates extremely tight timelines uh, for the identification of, of members in, in work notices, uh, and I think that the fact that even Conservative members um, struggled to keep a straight face uh, when confronted by the contradiction 
of requiring a postal ballot um, for mm. taking part in industrial action, uh, but within the space of three or four days, uh, an, an issuing of work notices would rather suggest that the government is on thin ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think that the minister would do well uh, to reflect on that um, if he uh, has the ability to, to sum up. Because where members do not have email addresses, uh, or, or perhaps have not shared these uh, with the union, the, the union is expected to rely on sending information via the, the postal service. Um, the code does not recognise that challenge, and, and given uh, the way in which Royal Mail uh, have acted in, in recent uh, months uh, and years, uh, it is not uncommon for there to be a postal strike, given the, the way that they have decided to run their business. Yep. Um, so you could, uh, Ms Noakes, I, I would uh, suggest, have, have something of a, a perfect storm there. Um, the code states that uh, unions should also tell a worker who is named in a work notice that they must, and I quote, carry out the work during the strike or could be subject to disciplinary proceedings, which include uh, dismissal. Again, I, I know that it is perhaps not normal for members of the Conservative Party to be completely au fait with how the trade union movement works, um, but the absolute nonsense of a trade union writing to a member who has joined the trade union to collectively organise being threatened with uh, disciplinary proceedings or dismissal really does make a mockery of the situation. Of course, many other members have, uh, and this is the penultimate point I would make, Ms. Noakes. Uh, many other members have made reference to the fact that the original legislation that was rushed through on the floor of the House um, made absolutely no reference to pickets. Uh, yet, surprise, surprise, we get legislation um, that is uh, pushed into a delegated legislation committee, a rather stuffy uh, delegated legislation committee, where I suspect most people are either playing Candy Crush or considering what they're going to write next Christmas cards. And of course, <laughs> there's legislation in there about strikes and about picketing when we were promised that that would not be the case on the floor of the House. But in um, conclusion, Ms Noakes, uh, the, the Strikes Minimum Service Levels Act of 2023 is a draconian piece of legislation that attacks individuals' fundamental rights while doing nothing, nothing whatsoever, to improve industrial relations. And at a minimum, the associated regulations that we are looking at today, and indeed others we are looking at uh, this evening, uh, intend to implement. Uh, I would suggest are just not uh, worthy of proper scrutiny, and I think Parliament must be given more sufficient time to examine each of the regulations in proper detail and to consider the analysis of the regulatory policy committee. But all of this, and, and with this I will finish, Ms. Noakes, all of this makes the point that myself, well, that's my friend from Glasgow North, my friend from Glasgow South West, <coughs> and many other SNP members in this place are sent here to stand up to make uh, the argument for stronger workers' rights. We were promised during the Brexit referendum that, that Brexit would not somehow be a, a bonfire of workers' rights. In six, seven years down the line, once again, we are served up legislation in here that Scotland did not vote for, that Scotland opposes at every single turn, and that I suspect in about six or seven minutes' time will pass because there is a democratic deficit in this place, and that makes the case for Scottish independence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.